So I'm here today with Cheryl Pluck. She manages podcasts and she helps the podcast management and just making sure there's a good strategy. I was a broadcaster professionally for years here in Canada. So I've really taken the best practices of the broadcasting industry into what I do today as a video strategist and also a business coach, taking video and content plans for six and seven figure businesses and looking at ways that they can grow their business and grow their brand. Recently, I've been really diving into the idea of systems and operations. And one of the ways that we like to teach people to implement a system that works for their business is by doing what we call profitable podcasting. You're listening to Social Media Storytelling. So I'm here today with Cheryl Pluck. Um, she manages podcasts and she helps the podcast uh, management and just making sure there's a good strategy. Um, Cheryl, if you could for us, just for this day's episode, could you do a quick introduction of like, how you got to this point in your life and, and why you enjoy it. Yeah, sure thing, Devin. So great to be with you. I was a TV pro, a broadcaster professionally for, for years and 17 of those years I spent on national television here in Canada. So I've really taken the best practices of the broadcasting industry into what I do today as a video strategist and also, frankly, a business coach. I mean, I frankly, they're all kind of intertwined. Really, what I specialize in is taking video and content plans for six and seven figure businesses and looking at ways that they can grow their business and grow their brand. Uh, so I guess ultimately it's, yes, video strategy with a business slant, so to speak. So more recently, I've been really diving into the idea of systems and operations. And one of the ways that we like to teach people to Im implement a system that works for the business is by doing what we call profitable podcasting. Awesome. And in today's episode, guys, just after Cheryl did that introduction, we're going to be talking about why you should start a podcast and how to make your podcast successful. So let's just start off with that first question, Cheryl. Um, why should someone, especially a business owner or an individual business, start a podcast for themselves? I think especially if you are a coach, a consultant, and, and someone that is looking to attract people for your high ticket offers, be it uh, coaching, consulting, maybe you have a high ticket mastermind or some type of membership or something of that nature. The truth is that in order for you to attract the right type of clients for those types of offers, you have to have a, a really not necessarily sophisticated, but you have to have a smart marketing strategy in order to be able to start relationships with those people. And typically you don't start off a really great relationship with someone if you are going for the jugular and trying to sell them something from, from the get-go, which is often what we see happening. So this is a great way to build relationships while at the same time creating valuable content that's actually going to be aligned for you as a coach or consultant, because typically people who start these types of businesses are doing it because they want to give back. They want to be able to leverage their professional and experience and insights and wisdom to be able to bring other people up. And, and it's often comes from a service mindset. So that's why I think there's such an alignment, not to mention the fact that it really is rooted in systems and being able to understand that you have to have fulfillment systems that are scalable you have to have marketing systems that are scalable and you also have to do sales. You know, you don't, you're not in business unless you're making sales. So it's a lot of this is predicated on the idea of relationships. Yeah. I mean, I was at this event yesterday. It was called Elevate and it was in Vegas. And there was a guy who was talking about like, we, we knew this for a while. You probably knew this too, but like every company is a media company now because you're trying to grow your presence. You're trying to grow your relationships. Um, and he said, like, one of the best ways to do that is through a podcast, because then you have your long form content. And then what we do too, like, obviously, we agree, you take that into short form content, which takes them to the podcast. I think even for just me and you, our relationship, it was cool, because I asked you to come on, come on a podcast episode. He said, Hey, I'd actually like a consultation as well. And now you're a client of ours. So that just shows you like how powerful connections can be made through podcasting. Yeah. And we've had, I want to say like five other people, we just started doing that last month, asking people to come on podcasts. And now they're a client of ours and they, they really like what we do. So I thought that was awesome. I mean, yours is a great example. It's exactly what we're talking about here is that when you approach someone 
with the intent of wanting to give them an opportunity to share something that's important to them and put them in the spotlight and put them on a pedestal to share messages that are important to them. Then it starts the relationship off on a really great note. It's like dating, right? It's like, what is that first date? But then what is the second date? And do you go on a third date? Meaning, are there other opportunities to biz build business through collaborations, joint ventures, uh, some other type of you know partnership that you have with another person? You want to kind of start that relationship off on the right foot. Totally. And I, there's one thing I wanted to add to just before we go into the how and more of the tactics, because uh, I think it's important. Um, one of our partners is Silicon Slopes here in Utah, and we help with their podcast like distribution on the short form clips. And they brought up an idea today of like, hey, we noticed that you guys started doing this. So what we do after our episodes, we give our guests like two to three clips that they can use on social media completely free. Don't charge them anything. So they just get it. And we did that for them. They're a client of ours, but also he was a guest on the episodes of him individually. He's like, why are, why are we not doing this for our like guests on our podcast? Cause they're like on episode 160. So we had a, a, a conversation where now we're going to take those podcast episodes, give them two clips to give to the guest and do an introduction for us. Um, so I think it's really important if you're not on a podcast, you start one and Cheryl, I don't know about you, but for us, so like even today, we're just using Riverside for the first time. What did your first podcast setup look like? Oh gosh. Well, you know, I've actually tried podcasting uh, several times in the past, but I did it with a very different mindset and with a very different strategy. And to be honest with you, probably a strategy that really <laughs> didn't work, <laughs> which is why I switched it up and now have found a much better solution for actually doing this in, in a much more streamlined way, production wise, not to mention the fact that there's a stronger strategy behind it. So going back in time, I started with, I mean, I think at the time, it's still a webcam, a very simple microphone setup. I mean, the technology is not something complicated, right? You can do it with um, a microphone that you buy on Amazon and a webcam from Logitech. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of necessarily a lot of equipment. I have a couple of like I have an LED light and a ring light. I mean, it's not a complicated technical setup. I think it's more about the strategy behind it, Devin. So back when, when I started it, I was doing it where I was pre-recording content and then I would be left with these long form interviews and then I would be left having to time code that. So if the interview was, let's say, you know, 35 minutes long, anyone who's been you know, in editing to any degree would know that like you have to go through that footage, but you got to listen for it and you got to pick your ins and your outs and you've got a time code and you've got to understand like how to be able to recognize where sound bites are, et cetera. Then you've, then you're left having to edit those things down. It's just a whole piece of post-production that happens. And that's often what people do today is they'll use zoom. For example, it's very common where people will record all these episodes on zoom, but then they're not editors. So they're left with this long form content and then they don't know what to do with it. It sits on a shelf. It does nothing happens with it. Six months goes by and there, yet there's all this really valuable content sitting there. So I think it's this idea of the post-production and how do you either eliminate it or radically reduce the amount of post-production. Now, where you and your organization at Story come in is like you obviously bring help to people in the post-production as far as the short form clips are concerned, but even just gathering those long form interviews, you can do that in a very efficient way or in a very non-efficient way. And so I think that's really where I started and then started scratching my head going, okay, this isn't really a scalable thing. This is not a sustainable model because I have to do all of the other things in my business. And that's often what happens when people are building up to six figures and going into multiple six figures is that you're doing a lot of the doing yourself. And you are playing the role of a lot of different jobs, you know, within the scope of your business. And you don't have time to spend 10 hours a week trying to make one episode of a podcast. So it's really built around this idea of the, of the uh, efficiencies. Not to mention that I think my strategy back then just wasn't dialed in. I didn't understand. I was, I was thinking, I think I was thinking of it more as podcasting for visibility, just the sake of, of building a, an audience. But guess what? That's a long-term strategy. It takes time to build an audience. So my, our feeling here is leveraging the podcast in a different way for short-term and medium-term ROI. 
or gains, meaning let's leverage it to meet people and build our network and build access to people who can introduce us to speaking opportunities and referrals coming toward you and maybe even turning those people into clients themselves. And that's really the focus of, of what we do today. Man, that's awesome. And like, just to add the, to go back to the beginning too, like when you were mentioning starting your podcast uh, at the event yesterday, I don't know how much you spent, but this guy said he spent $20,000 on a podcast setup. Um, our first episode, I, I bought a couple hexagons for five bucks. I had a mic and I had my Logitech camera. So total, like maybe a hundred bucks. Um, and I think, Devin, like, I think that's, I think yeah. that's a common experience though. I think yeah. it's a common experience for people, maybe not 20,000, but I think it's a common experience for people to go out and spend thousands of dollars on equipment, right? And they get the DSLRs and they get all of the, the things and, and, and they get this amazing setup with the sure mics and the booms and the, and all this stuff, because that's what they see Joe Rogan yeah. do. So that they figure, well, if I want to be Joe Rogan, I have to have the setup that he has. And then they go out and they spend all this money on it. And it's like, that's not the important thing, Right you can create a, a great podcast. It's more about what you're saying and the value that you're providing through what, you, what you're putting together in terms of the topics and what the conversations are yes. if you're doing a talk show interview style. Um, it's not necessarily about the technical setup in the early stages. Start with a strong strategy, become profitable so that you can start reinvesting and then you upgrade things as you go throughout time. Yes. And like that relates so well to social media. You'd be surprised how many people I talk to be like, okay, what type of professional camera do I need to get? Um, what background setup should I buy? Uh, what mic do I need to get? Like, no, you have that thing in your pocket. That's your phone that works better than any camera. And it looks more natural. And I'd say the more natural it looks is actually the better it performs. And people get hung up on the quality of the content. They forget about the message and the message really is what's important. I've seen people spend thousands of dollars on like good setups and they get like maybe five in comments or likes on their posts. And then you have people that are just using their phone that are getting thousands of likes and comments. So I think like it's good to overcome that hurdle of, Oh, I don't need all this professional stuff. I just need to do it and get started and start seeing that. And I, I think another thing I want to touch on, because it really is so cool growing relationships. Remember what the purpose of your podcast is. So there's two purposes for me. There's one, I want to get, I want, as many people as possible to know about story, but second, and I'd actually put this first instead, is I'm trying to grow these relationships, get referral partners, find some really awesome people. And I think like the best way to do that without coming off like sales, like me trying to sell you, Cheryl, was let's just get you on a podcast, see if we like each other, and then let's talk business afterwards. Um, yeah. And that's really how yeah. it went down. So I think that was really cool if you want to add anything to that too. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And let me tell you a, a real quick story, just back to equipment for a second. I was, yeah. I was, I went for, uh, went to a meeting, an in-person meeting with a real estate brokerage some years ago, and we were talking, et cetera. And at the end of the conversation, uh, I was giving them a plan and I'm saying, we're going to do, do this, do that, the other. And then I think at the end I had said, well, let's go out somewhere in your office where we'll record these videos. And they said, oh, follow us. And and they said, we've already got it all dialed in. I said, oh, really? So we walk down this hallway. We get to this back room, open the door only to find they have green screen, tripods, lights, rafters. Like, I mean, every single, they had a set. They had like, you know, they had gone to Wayfair and ordered furniture. I mean, like they had everything and it was collecting dust. Why? Because they didn't have a message. They didn't have a strategy for what they were going to do with that stuff. And I think this is just a common thing. So I just wanted to kind of share that, that story, but because it's a really common thing that I see, but no, back to no. your point about relationships. Can I touch on Absolutely. that real quick, Cheryl? Cause I thought that was so cool. Um, what you oh, okay. Sure. Like, yeah. Like that describes like, I think like 90% of people that are trying to get on, like you'd be surprised how many stories I've heard of that, where I've heard one person spend 50 grand on a building with equipment camera lights you name it everything like he has a green screen that's 360 i'm like yeah how often do you use that zero so zero. finding someone like cheryl that can help you own in on that message and like really grow that because it's going to be a lot easier to record the content so i just sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you i just that like you were like speaking my language right there i had to get it out because it's crazy how many times i see it i see it all the time too i mean i've seen it multiple times this is one example 
And so I think it is really about the strategy of what are you doing with the podcast and what is it intended to do for you? And keep in mind, our view at least is that podcasting is the vehicle. It's the mechanism by which you can elegantly create and build relationships with people at the end of the day. It's the vehicle by which to do that. Really what the podcast is, is one of three fundamental systems within your business that you need to be going from six figures to seven figures, right? This is a common thing that coaches and consultants want to do. They've started something great. They're probably doing like one-to-one service work. Uh, They are maxed out. They're at capacity and there's no path for them to scale. So in order to go from six to seven figures, they have to have three fundamental systems within the business. And that is around this idea of the offer. So you have to have your scalable offer dialed in. What, how, what's that going to look like? And then the podcast comes under the realm of the marketing. So this would be more around the marketing, the lead generation. The, the podcast is really the vehicle. We feel the most elegant vehicle to use to do that. And then you have sales. You have to have all three of these systems dialed in in order to scale from six to seven figures. So the podcast and why I think it's so effective in the realm of those systems is that it's around really uh, doing good work in the world. It's, it's about bringing together amazing people and giving people an opportunity to speak. And you also get your opportunity to add your voice to the conversation and putting really quality content out there that will appeal, especially when you have a high ticket offer, right? Because the truth is that, and I think we're going to dovetail into social media, the challenge with social media is that the people that are your ideal clients often are not the people who are necessarily scrolling through Facebook looking for an inspirational quote. That's the challenge that we're faced with. I'm not against social media. I like it. I think it's still a very viable distribution channel, but you have to be smart about how you're going to show up in those channels. I love that. And I I think what we could dive into is tactic wise, what to do after the podcast. So I'll I'll throw some advice and I want to hear from you too, Cheryl. So what we do after our podcast is we give our guests two to three clips. We also give them a social caption to post. So even if they don't get value from, so they're getting value from us directly because we're giving them something to post. Not only are they able to post value to their audience, but they're helping us grow our audience because we either post it and collaborate with them or tag them in it, but nine times out of 10, they'll tag us in the post. Like story did a great job by giving this content. It was really awesome to be on the podcast. It'd be weird not to ta- tag the company in person in there. So I think tactic wise, how you use a podcast on social media really matters. Um, Cause if you just go and post a 30 minute clip, uh, you'd be surprised how many times I see it horizontal on Instagram. Like it's probably, nobody's going to listen to that. No one's going to be like, Oh great. I'm on social media. I want to listen to a 30 minute video. It's no, I want to see like 15 to 30 seconds and it might be something I'm not even thinking about. So if you have anything to add that to after podcast strategy, that'd be great. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that we often do, in fact, I always do when I have a guest on my podcast, once the live stream has ended or we've stopped recording, depending on how we're producing it that particular day, I will often say to the guest, you know, here are some ways that you can promote your appearance on the show. So for example, let's say, Go to my YouTube channel and you can either embed the video portion of what we've just completed because we do video and audio. Take the video and embed it on your email and send it out as a blast to your email and show them that you've just appeared on the podcast. Or you can use the link on YouTube to drive people, your audience, to your appearance on that show. So it's a way to leverage the longer form content. But to your point, yes, we do like to... And, and this is part of the reason why we're connected now too, is, is yeah. we also will take what we've done long form and cut that up into smaller pieces and put that on social media, tag that person in it so that they have now assets that they can utilize that they didn't have any part in producing. So it's a reciprocal relationship that we're building. They didn't ask for it. We're just doing it out of the kindness of our hearts, right? Because we want to be able to get our message out to more people, but also help them at the same time. So I think that's where the, the you know, one of the, the strategies around the short form content comes in, but the long, even the long form can be promoted more effectively too. It totally could. I mean, uh, yeah, it really could. Just like what I mentioned, I've seen people put the full on podcast in an Instagram post, like put that on yeah. YouTube, you can embed yeah. it on your website, embed it in an email. And I think like other tips, like 
tell your guest how to email that to your list. Like you said, you mentioned how to embed it. Well, write them an email that they can send out to their list because that's just going to help you grow your company. And I think a lot of people underestimate podcasts and like, it's a really hard thing to do. It's super simple um, from my standpoint. It's been a pretty easy process so far. I mean, you're, you just need your MVP, your most viable product and how can you make it better every single time is really where you need to start. And Cheryl, I think you hit it right on the, the head is have your message honed in. The equipment doesn't matter, but just start with your phone if, if really that's what it takes to get started. Yeah. I have a video that I have a video on YouTube that has, I, won't, I don't even have it checked lately, probably 1.2 million views or so. Wow. And that video was produced on a phone. It was produced mm -hmm. on an iPhone. I mean, it doesn't take massive, you know, uh, expensive equipment or a multitude of pieces of equipment to make that happen. So it's really doable. I have, uh, I think I have 2.5 million views on my YouTube channel. And I would say probably all of those videos were produced on an iPhone. So it's absolutely possible. The other thing I wanted to mention is that from the perspective of, let's say, social media or promotion of long form or short form content, I'll speak to long form for a moment, is okay. that an another thing that we're starting to do more of, and we haven't been great at this, but this is something that's part of our improvement, you know, something we can improve at, is giving our guests the idea or at least suggesting the idea that they could create a blog post on their own website backlinking to us. So now this is kind of getting into the SEO kind of place that I'm not as familiar with, um, but that I have been getting trained on myself so that I could better understand how I can help my guests do better with their content that we're producing for them. And I just feel like that's part of the, the process is I need to learn so I can help them help themselves. And that's one of the things that we're starting to do a lot more of now is a better understanding around SEO and how a blog post that they create that's backlinked to our, you know, blog post where we're taking our content and putting it on there as well. All these things are interconnected. So I think it's just this understanding of how things work online and just understanding that they're intertwined and that the more you can put content here and it's connected to this or I'm tagged here or it's this, this piece around omnipresence and SEO, I think that meet together that help you get the message out to more people. But at the end of the day though, Devin, what's interesting is that at least from our perspective, I'm not as interested in vanity metrics. I'm really not interested in virality. I'm not really interested in having a million followers or a million likes on a video. It's nice if it happens, but that's not my intent. My intent is to leverage these these pieces of content, whether long form podcast or short form curated repurposed clips to be able to build relationships with people and get clients, referrals, or speaking engagements, because those are the three things that help move a business forward. Yeah, that's awesome. I think we're going to end with that, Cheryl. And I do want to say one more thing. There was a reason why we intentionally started with the why. And I think, remember why you're starting your podcast. Cheryl mentioned it a bunch of times, a bunch of different examples. But also when you give your guests those assets, make sure they understand why. Because if you did give someone like how to write a blog and how to backlink, they're going to be like, okay, but that takes a lot of work. So explain like what that means to them. It's going to help them rank higher in search. They're going to have authority on their page and they're going to have valuable assets on their website. So I just wanted to say that. Cheryl, is there anything that you want to end with for our audience today? Well, I mean, I think it's really about thinking about your systems. It is really thinking about your systems. If you really want to scale your business, you want to grow your business, make sure you have those three fundamental systems dialed in, right? The offer, uh, the marketing, and oh, sorry, the fulfillment of the offer and the fulfillment, uh, the marketing and the sales. Okay. Thanks guys for everybody listening today. Um, you can find Cheryl. Cheryl, what's your in, or LinkedIn? Which one's better? LinkedIn, Instagram? Uh, just, you know, I'm, I have a French Canadian name, so it was really easy to find my username back when, when I got all my, you know socials. So at Cheryl Pluff is where you can find me. Okay, perfect. And for those listening, that is spelled S-H-E-R-Y-L-P-L-O-U-F-F-E. -F -F -E. Okay. Thanks guys. Thanks for listening. For all things social media, visit us online at story.co. We'll see you next time.